All right, we're gonna tie up a sculpin pattern here that's a little variation of my own, has a couple little things that I've added. It's real similar to a lot of deer hair sculpin patterns, but it's got a few of my own variations. Um, we're gonna start off using just a 3X long streamer hook, um, and I pre-wrap all my hooks with lead wire just so I don't have to do it each time I put a hook in the vise. I just go ahead and do it beforehand. So we're gonna go ahead and get this locked in. Now I'm going to use, this is a 140 denier UTC thread. Um, you can also use size A winding thread, um, but you want a pretty heavy thread because we're going to end up doing some deer hair work here. There we go. All right, so we're going to start by attaching our thread. And anytime you're using lead, you want to really be sure and build up a ramp on both sides of it. So you're going to try and build a nice little ramp right up here on the front. What this is going to do is keep this from sliding. Because if you don't put these nice ramps on here, next thing you know, your whole fly will end up down here around your, by your point of your hook. Um, so I get a nice ramp built in front, wrap over the top here, and build a nice good ball right in back here to really lock this lead in place. Sometimes that lead will move a little on you. Lead is very pliable though. You can move it around. All right, so we get that there. All right. So we're going to tie this one in a dark olive. And sculpins are kind of chameleons. They'll change color depending on what the light is. Um, if it's real kind of cloudy overcast day, that's when you're going to want to fish your all dark olives and your black and your brown colors. Um, if it's a bright sunny day, these sculpins are real light colored. Um, and they really change color with the amount of light that there is. Um, we had, we had a couple of them in a fish tank one time and um, you'd turn the lights off and they'd turn jet black in about 30 seconds. Then you'd turn the lights back on and you'd watch the sculpins totally change color and get real light colored once the light was on them. So that's a real good thing when you're fishing sculpin patterns is match your, your uh, colors to your skies. Dark skies, dark flies, light skies, light flies. Um, it's a pretty good rule to live by. So I'm going to take a piece of this rabbit strip here. Um, we're going to go ahead and we're going to kind of tie it in zonker style. I'm going to pull some of this fibers back out of the way, a little bit of moisture on it. And what I'm trying to do is get a nice little gap here that I can tie onto the hook. So I'm going to lay this in right at the back, get a couple real good wraps on it. Make sure you get that hide square to the hook. Get that tied off and then pull it back out of the way. Now we're going to use, for our body material, this is called polar chenille. Uh, and this makes a really neat buggy body that flows real well. Um, when I fish sculpins, I typically tend to dead drift them under an indicator more than actual strip them. Um, one big reason is a lot of times I have a tough time getting clients to actually strip a fly. So it's a lot easier to dead drift it. Plus I, I just do real well dead drifting these things. So I'm going to take this polar chenille, cut a chunk off. And you'll notice that on the polar chenille, it kind of has a natural direction that it wants to lay. So you want to make sure that that's facing off to the back when you tie it in. So I don't want to tie it in this way because everything is going to want to lay forward. So I want to make sure I tie it in so it all lays to the back. I'm going to go ahead and tie this polar chenille in. And I'm going to bring my thread right up to the front here. Now when you wrap this stuff, you want to pull all the fibers back out of the way with each wrap. So you make a wrap and then pull. Keep moving that material and those fibers back out of the way into the back when you make your wraps. This is going to give it a lot of motion and a lot of bugginess to it. All right, we make each wrap. Really be sure to pull all this stuff back out of the way. Sometimes it takes one or two pulls on everything just to really I really want to get all this fibrous material to lay backwards. All right. You don't want to go all the way up because we're going to put a big deer hair head on this. So you want to give yourself plenty of room to do that head. So we'll just tie this off here. 
give it a little trim. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and pull all these fibers to this to one side or the other so that when I pull this forward, I'm not binding a bunch of it down and not making it useful. Now I'm going to pull this bunny strip up forward here and we're going to tie this off right there. Come in and trim this little tag end of the bunny fur and we'll wrap down on that to get it really good and secure. And you're going to want to leave yourself a good, almost not quite half, but close to half of the hook to put this head because one thing on sculpins is they've got a very big head. They look just like a catfish, so you want that head to be a major portion of this fly. So you can give yourself a lot of room to make the head. Stroke all that stuff back. And you can see how all this material in this polar chenille that we just wrapped in, it all kind of hangs off the back, gives some sparkle and a lot of movement in that body when it's in the water. Now our next step is, the other prominent feature with that big head on sculpins is they have very large pectoral fins that stick out the side. Um, they're real prehistoric looking bait fish, but big trout really, really like sculpins, especially throughout southwest Montana. It's a fly that most people have in their box for some reason or for one occasion or another. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, these are just uh, grizzly feathers off of a woolly bugger saddle. Um, and we're going to take and use this actual real webby underplume of the feather. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take two of these, lay them on top of each other, and kind of stroke all those fibers to really get them all sticking straight out. And I'll come in and I'll peel off the bottom most parts of it, because that's going to be my tie-in point. And I'm going to come in here and I'm going to trim out the tip just like that. Then you can take and round off the edge right here to give that round shape of those pec fins. So you do one side. And the easiest way to do this, if you take two of them and do it at once, you're going to have mirror images of each other because you're trimming them both at the same time. So you're going to end up with two feathers that have pretty much the identical same shape. Now we're going to take one feather and tie it on one side here. And we'll take this second one and tie it on on the other side. All right. Then you can take and pull these back out of the way. And that's going to give us those really big peck fins that sculpins have. Um, and you'll get a lot of nice emulsion with this kind of webby material that moves around a lot. All right, so now the next step is we're going to break out. This is just deer hair that you use for spinning bass bugs. Um, and it's if you're going to tie these, make sure you're either in your garage or if you it's nice enough to be outside on a picnic table, I suggest you go outside and do that because uh, if you have a significant other that does most of the vacuuming, they're going to hate you for doing this fly inside your house. Um, we're going to take a big clump of this deer hair here, and trim that out. Then you got to pull all this under fiber out. So I give a nice big pull here and then I'll actually use a comb to help get the remaining stuff out of it. Now this is going to be the actual collar that wraps around this, so we're going to actually put it in a hair stacker and stack these tips. We'll go ahead and just a couple taps. You don't have to do a whole bunch of them. It gets obnoxious if you do too many taps. And that's going to make for some nice even tips on your hair. Go ahead and grasp that bundle. Then you come in and you're going to lay your collar and you want your collar to go a good ways back. So I'm going to kind of judge this. Get your thread right back at the rear there. Get the length you want. and Trim these tips up. A lot of guys will actually go ahead and spin this hair in, but I like to just flare this collar on here and not do the full spin. So we're going to lay this in here. Lay it right on top. Move it over. You're going to take two loose wraps. After that second wrap, you slightly start to pull. 
Make one more and then you can pull real tight and that'll flare that hair. Sometimes it'll break the thread. <laughs> That's why you want to use real heavy thread. All right, so we get that collar on there. You want it to really splay around. Then you can just pull these up out of the way. We're gonna wrap our thread right in the front end of it. And with deer hair, you really gotta kind of manipulate it and play with it a lot. A lot of people do not like messing with deer hair, but it's just a matter of playing with it. Now we're gonna go ahead and trim out another big chunk. Trim out another big chunk of hair. And you want this to be just a little, right about the size of a number two pencil. Um, seems to be about the right amount. Go ahead and get all those fibers out. This is real important to get the fibers out of this hair because it won't spin properly if you have all that under fur in there. So you get all that under fur out of the hair. And then the other key to spinning is you need to take these tips just trim those off of there because those tips will bind as it starts to spin. So now we're going to take our clump, bring it right up on the hook here. Again, we're going to make two loose wraps, start to pull, make one more, and let her go and it'll flare all that hair and spin it around. Then you're going to take your thumb and your forefinger or you can get a hair packer. And you're going to take this hair and really try and push it all back. I don't worry too much about getting this super, super tight. Um, if you were tying bass bugs, the, when you're tying bass bugs, typically the guys like to get that bass hair real packed tight because they're trying to keep those flies on top. But since this fly sinks, you want a little bit of air and space in between all your hair. Now we'll just keep repeating this process. It'll probably take maybe one, maybe two more clumps. One, two. Start to pull, give a third, zap it around. All right, so we got it all packed in there. Now we're going to go ahead and pull this back out of the way. All right, and the last step of this. Now we've got all our bundles of hair in there, so we're going to whip finish it. That last bundle I put in there may have been make putting this finishing knot on this a little difficult. So go ahead and whip finish it, trim it off. Now the fun part begins, and this is where the artistry of the guys who are really good with hair begin. <laughs> and we've got to take and trim this fly up. Okay, trim this with regular scissors, but I like to use these double-edged razor blades. You've got to be a little careful with these things, though, because they uh, are super sharp and they can cut you if you're not careful. So you go ahead and pull these out. And the first step, I usually will take you're going to go straight down. I like to take it out of the vise usually to trim it. So your first cut on this is you're going to want to go flat on the bottom. So just take your razor blade, slowly kind of saw it through there. Trim that off as flat as you can get it. So you get your nice original flat cut there. Now the next cut I do is going to be angled slightly upwards from the point of the eye straight up. So now I kind of cut a ramp at the head here. And sculpin heads are generally kind of flat and triangular shaped. So that's what, really what you're trying to achieve. So now we need to just do our two sides. So you're going to start at the eye, kind of cut away. Then you do kind of the same thing on the opposite side.
You gotta be a little careful with these razor blades because you can you can take out a big chunk real quick if you're not careful. And you just kind of work at trimming this into kind of a heart, almost a heart shape. Then after you get the kind of initial shape that you're looking for, I put it back into the vise. And now you can do any of your fine tuning that you want to do for trimming your shape. Um, I like to try and round off the sides a little bit, give it a little bit more roundness. And we're a little too steep on that. And I found really you end up start playing with this too much and you end up just trimming it way to heck and back. So be real careful. Get your basic shape. Pull everything out here. Then you can come in with your scissors and if you see any little weird stray ones, you can cut some of the stray fibers out of it. I got a couple right here. Pop that up. Now it's just kind of slick everything back. And there's your biggie sculpin pattern.